Welcome to the 8th topic of this course where I'll look at subprograms, a very important topic and in addition to the normal specification points for this actual topic we're going to be finally covering global and local variables at the end of this video. So let's begin by looking at actually what a subprogram is. So a subprogram is a block of code that performs a specific task. Uh, the term subprogram isn't I'd say the most commonly used term to refer to what these are. Often they're called subroutine, subroutines or um, routines occasionally so I know it as a subroutine to be honest and that's what most people I would imagine call it but the example wants to call it a subprogram and some people do refer to it as a subprogram um, and actually a subprogram does really quite nicely explain what they are really you have your main program and then you have this block of code this packaged unit that acts as a program within a program so the name does work but if I slip into calling it a subroutine uh, you know what it means so they're given names, these subprograms, and they can be used and reused throughout the program by calling their name in a statement. So this is the first bit of terminology that's probably quite new and quite specific to the nature of subprograms. And when you call their name, uh, it causes them to be executed. So another term is passed, and so data can be passed into the subroutine, so like the input to the subroutine, through something called parameters. And these are like a special kind of variable used for the input to the subprogram. So let's look at an example, uh, a relatively contrived example, really just to show you these elements at play. So this is us defining a function in Python. A function, as we'll see, is a type of pro a subprogram. And so de defining is really just providing the instructions. Um, We've only really got one line here, but you can obviously imagine even more complicated subprograms. And so the parameters here are sum and n, and the, the name is mean. And so these are our, our variables in a sense, but they're really just used for the sub the subprogram input. And this is us calling the subprogram just by using mean and then having these brackets. And so this is actually this is us providing the data, passing the data into the subroutine. So two terms you might need to know. It doesn't really list it on the specification, but if you know this, it's, I guess, a bonus at the very least. Um, so parameters, as we say, are the variables, and the argument is actually the data that's get the data is actually get, getting passed to the subroutine. So 10 is the argument for the parameter sum, and 2 is the argument for the parameter n. So as with variables, the variables actually represent an actual bit of data, and this is the bit of data, and this is us calling the subroutine, the subprogram, because we're essentially listing their name, we're referencing their name in a statement, causing them to be executed. So um, yes, that was a bit of a mess, but hopefully it'll make sense later as we progress through the video. So you need to know about two subprograms, as I say, this is a function. I also need to know about procedures. Um, and so generally we say that functions return a value. Um, depending on the implementation, again, uh, this does vary as fact that procedures may or may not return a value so usually functions are based on their mathematical counterpart where they always return a value an input is taken and a value is produced so a bit like an algorithm uh, these are essentially algorithms within the larger program and procedures may or may not return a value usually we say they don't return a value but not every not every programming language has both a function and procedure some of them don't have them don't have either um, and so it does vary a little bit but that's sort of a general case and so the return value again not a bit of terminology listed on the specification and this is just a value that come comes back from the subprogram so it goes back to the calling unit so this is our calling unit it's what's calling the subprogram and the data returned is five in this example so it's 10 divided by two okay so two bits of pseudocode for the from uh, edXL this is for a function this is for a procedure you can see that the function does have this return line of code and for procedure doesn't, it's just doing a little bit of just doing some instruction. Um, and so this is the difference. Our parameters are mark one, mark two, and mark three in both cases. And uh, you can see the difference is we got this, we've got this return line in this function. Okay, I just paused the recording and listened to what I just said. Uh, sorry, but I stumbled through that a bit, at least more than normal. Um, I also called it a subroutine a couple of times, so sorry about that. Hopefully that didn't confuse you too much. Uh, the example would also want you to know that you can have your user written subprograms, what we just looked at. This is the same example, just recycling it there. And you can also have make use of pre-existing subprograms. So if you see this on the exam, you'll know that this means either built-in subprograms, so like print, input, length in Python, uh, which are available to the programmer as soon as you start coding in the language, so they're built in. Uh, and 
You can also make use of code libraries. Again, this is also a specification. And these are collections of additional subprograms. So there's often, I mean, there might be, what, 20, 25 built in subprograms, but there may be hundreds of subprograms in these libraries. And they often come with your language too. So when you download it for the first time, uh, the IDE. And these are collections of additional subprograms and they often tackle more complex and specific tasks. So some of these, maybe not length, but input and print are really fundamental. You kind of need them when you're programming. Whereas these are much more for specific things like graphics and maybe if you want to write games, you have to make use of a library. And in Python, um, I'm using continuing to use Python examples, uh, the command import allows you to gain access to those libraries so they're not built in you have to actually have a stage where you import them and the math library uh, as you can probably imagine just adds much many more mathematical functions so like the trig functions you know sine cosine um, and they're not built in by default like I say you have to actually import them so a couple of examples here um, using um, so for cosine of zero zero is our argument to this function, um, also called a module sometimes, and so the cosine of zero is one, as you should hopefully know. Uh, the arctan, so tan to the minus one of one is 45 degrees. Uh, this is in radians, and radians uses pi, so it's in multiples of pi, which is where you get this funny long decimal number, and this is just saying that 45 in degrees equals this in radians. So just a couple of examples of a library. Uh, I can't remember seeing this on my specification, but it might be useful because it comes up. Why should we use pre-existing subprograms, specifically libraries? And so the first thing is they've been coded by someone else, and often they're pre-compiled. Uh, we, we still haven't covered what a compiler is, even though we've talked about it a couple of times. But um, essentially, this just saves time for the programmer, and also when it's compiled. We'll look at uh, translators later in a future video. And they also um, perform a function, like I say, that is very specific and often requires very specialized knowledge to code and it would make programming a lot harder if it weren't available. Can you imagine having to program a print statement? I wouldn't know how you would program a print statement. Fortunately someone else has done it for me as with all the other uh, sub-programs. So essentially it saves time and makes it easier for you. So that would be a nice maybe three or four mark answer hopefully. And so this is on my specification, what are the benefits of sub-programs? So they allow you to perform something called generali generalization and this is somewhat difficult to explain so I'll do my best and so generalization um, in fact let's just look at a definition. This is a definition to some extent I've made myself. Um, I've really try to be careful of what I've named it. I've been switching between different terms but uh, essentially generalization is reducing complexity by replacing multiple instructions with a single broader more general case of the task so really is what the term means um, so it reduces complexity because several specific tasks can be combined to one generalized subprogram. so instead of having lots of lines of very similar code for very specific instances um, you could use parameters and variables in a subprogram to deal with the more general case. So in the previous example we looked at with the cos, you could you could write code for every single as in you could do the cosine of zero is one and then do it for the cosine of two, the cosine of three. But instead you can use a function to generalize the ta the generalize the task and then use a parameter to pass the data to that function. So you have this general broader case of the instruction. Hopefully that made sense. You may want to pause it and read what I've written because I might have expressed it better in writing. Um, okay, let's do another example. So we looked at algorithms in the first topic. Um, you could, if we look at so a sorting algorithm that orders a list, you could have an alphabetical list, you could have a numerical list. You don't want to have a separate algorithm for the numerical bit and the alphabet alphabet list you want a single algorithm that does the general sorting you don't want several algorithms that do a very similar job but with different instances of data so that's what generalization is hopefully I explained that okay uh, you can also the, the main benefit of subprograms is that you can reuse the code many times instead of having loads of duplicate code you can just have this nice packet of code and just call it and reuse it whenever you want so that's really important also um, going back to topic two about decomposition um, subprograms 
are the kind of individual parts that, that you can break a problem into and this simplifies a problem as we looked at in this video in that video and you can also divide a program and sort of split it up among several programmers so we can finally go on to look at global and local variables uh, so a global variable is a variable declared outside of any subprogram and that's usually at the beginning of code but that doesn't necessarily matter and they can be accessed from anywhere in the program so this contrasts with a local variable in that they are declared locally within a subprogram uh, meaning that they can only be accessed in the subprogram. So if we look at this in a diagram form with this large circle representing our main body of code and this smaller one representing a subprogram. And so the global variables are declared outside of the subprograms so in the main program and the local variables are within the actual individual subprogram. So uh, really the global variables can be accessed by anywhere. They have a, a, a global scope. Um, so the subprogram can access the variables. They can um, use the data in the variables, but the local variables can't be accessed by other parts of the program unless it's passed around with parameters. So another way of so you have parameters that pass data to subprograms. Another way of inputting something to a subprogram is via a global variable because they can access them. Um, so why is it good programming practice to declare local variables over global variables? Well, local variable references um, in a subprogram take precedence over other variables and essentially this means that you can use multiple variables with the same name so you couldn't use multiple global variables with the same name but local variables if you have 10 15 subprograms um, the variables in those the local variables can share names with other ones in different subprograms and on a small scale this isn't massively difficult to overcome but when you have a massive uh, program um, you can imagine it probably gets diff you know, the, the imagination having to go in to think of variable names, it probably gets stretched a little bit. Um, so another reason why local variables are preferable is that they prevent issues arising when a subprogram accidentally changes and accesses other parts of a program, so the main body of code that they shouldn't have access to. And this is accidental, so say another subprogram needs access to a global variable, but this subprogram has changed it somehow. That's not ideal because it's going to have a knock on effect to the rest of the program. Um, but if we just use local variables, it makes it, it kind of prevents the situation happening before it does. And also, it's also good programming practice to pass data via parameters. And so you almost have a chain of events, a chain of subprograms um, that pass data instead of using global variables. Uh, but that's it for today's video. Hopefully, it was useful. Um, Next up we're looking at binary, so that's quite an interesting topic, uh, so thank you for watching.